The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Um, thanks for your patience. We'll just give everybody another minute to join us, and, uh, and then we'll get started. All right, again, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, in the interest of timing, let's get started today. So welcome to our webinar. Thanks for taking the time out of your day today uh, to join us for our, um, our latest webinar. So just to give you a, a sense of, of where we've been, so this is kind of, we took, um, we do this on each of our webinars. So we've you know started at the beginning and, and looked at uh, purchase orders and inventory all the way through to, um, to trade management and things like that. So based on the feedback I got from some of you, we actually, um, and this year, we actually started focusing on some of our, our partners like Nav Payroll, um, and then also uh, showing you some of our uh, products that, um, that we've produced internally as well, like BC EDI, uh, pack and ship notifications, that sort of thing. Um, so la last webinar, we talked about BC Mobile for Android. So if you weren't able to make it, um, I'll show you the link a little bit later in our presentation of how you can get to our website um, and see all of the previous recordings, as well as today's recording as well. If there's anybody at your organization you think would benefit to see it and wasn't able to make it today. Okay, so today we're gonna be talking about reporting. <clears throat> so uh, the, goal of, the goal at Beck Consulting has always been to make all of you self-sufficient in your environments to, you know, to make it so that you can manage, you know, sort of your, um, your business on your own with assistance from us when needed. So we do want to make sure that we provide you with tools that make to, to make that possible. So periodically we, we run rep webinars monthly like this to showcase um, some of the things that are available in your system currently and also some things that um, that you can add on um, that provide may provide you extra benefits. OK, so in this webinar, we're, we're going to be talking about uh, reporting, as I mentioned. So first, we'll kind of start off with uh, standard NAV reporting. Um, for those of those of you who are very familiar with your standard NAV reports, that's printing your sales invoice, looking at your inventory, any of those reports you print out of NAV. So we'll kind of talk a little bit about that and the history behind that and then how you can even develop reports on your own. OK. Um, and then we'll look at style sheets. So style sheets are, are kind of an integration to Microsoft Word, which allows you to develop your own documents like, you know, certificates of analysis, even invoices, purchase orders, things like that. And what that does is make you a little bit more self-sufficient that you can go in there and tweak those documents whenever you need to without coming back to us and having us modify a standard NAV report. We'll then look at the data warehouse, which is a product that, that, we, that we offer um, in most of our implementations. And if you don't have that, you can certainly reach out to me and I can give you more information on that. Um, and we'll talk about the data warehouse and some of the um, options that are there for you. And then we'll kind of wrap up the session with uh, our kind of a brief review of Power BI. OK, so since we'll be looking at kind of four different uh, reporting uh, possibilities in the system, as well as some of the, the things that are available on the role center, we'll be taking a high level at each one of these things. Um, and most of these things are available to you already in your system. And there's many different, <clears throat> excuse me, trainings, training um, resources out on the web for things like Power BI and creating reports from Excel and things like that. But certainly reach out to us if you uh, to me if you have any questions. Uh, wrong way so just go here okay so let's get into our demo so i will be jumping um between two different remote desktop sessions today um so the first um i want to look at is um you know so we'll kind of take a, a brief look at um how wh what the reporting um engine within nav used to look like okay so this was um th this was this is 2009 for those of you who are familiar with older versions of dynamics nav um, and in this version of NAV, you could get to, you could see the uh, user interface in the background. 
Um, you could get into the uh, object designer, open up a report, and you would see everything to do with that report inside the Dynamics Nav system. Um, so you would see all of your data elements here as well as the layout for the report. And you could basically just drag and drop things and move things around and add things. And, um, and it was all within the Nav system. Okay, so this is what I learned to develop reports on years ago, and um, and uh, and then in in 2013 R2, and then 20, and then as as the um, the Roll Taylor client developed a little bit more, what uh, Microsoft did is split out the logic from the layout design of the report. Um, so you know a report is made up of many different parts. You have your data elements here. Okay, you have the logic in behind. So if I op open this up and I can just get drill into the code here, so you see there's a lot of logic in the background that happens for calculations and things like that. Um, and then you have the layout, which we see here is how, you know, what the sections are, the grouping, the totaling, all of that sort of thing. Then you have properties and triggers and you have a whole bunch of things that go into a report. So a lot of us that actually use reports on a daily basis by just running something out of nav, really don't, um, probably don't think too much about all of the things that go into building that report in the background on, on all the calculations that are done in the sections and the grouping and the totaling and the layout and, and logos in a certain position and things like that. Okay. So I'm just going to escape Betty here because, you know, we don't need to look at 20, uh, 2019 anymore. I'm not going to save this report. So I'm going to close out of here. And that just let me open. Um, so then as we went into later versions of NAV, um, you'll see this is um, NAV split out the um, the dev the uh, the role tailored environment from the development environment, and so you see the role tailored environment here in the background, and then you have a development environment as well. So you still have thing a thing like the object uh, object designer with all of your objects and your probably familiar tables, reports, etc. Um, but when I start looking at reports and just pop open maybe a sales invoice. If I design that report, I see that um, it looks a little bit different in the designer. So I have all of the columns and all of the logic still reside, resides in nav. So all of my calculations are done there. All of my data elements telling me to pull this information from a sales invoice line and look at the lots and I have it links to tables and things like that. But what has changed is the layout. So instead of the layout being within nav, the layout is now an, uh, a SQL server or you know a report designer. You can use SQL server, report builder, um, reporting services, things like that. So the layout, the design of the report, how it looks on the page to you is actually done separately. Okay, so they separated out the logic portion of the report from the layout. Okay. So that was a that was a significant change that came in around 2013 R2 to 2015 in there. Um, and those of you who have gone through an upgrade, um, you realize you know that going through that upgrade process, it was um, arduous to getting those reports from 2009 into um, into 20 into later versions of NAV because none, there's no there's no coding in this. Okay, there's no coding in the background on sections and things like that. So there there was a there was a conversion process that had to take place in getting those reports to um, to a modern um, look and feel. Um, so this is the report designer. The, the SQL Server report builder comes with SQL Server. So you, most of you or all of you should have access to this. Um, and then I can take a standard nav report and then I can kind of do the same thing. So, you know, I can move around fields and forms and I can add um, labels and captions and I can add logos and things like that. So um, I do have a lot of availability to even work with those standard nav reports to actually develop those on my own. And we have quite a few clients that do that on their own. Um, some of them to varying degrees. Some of them do the, the coding in, in nav as well as the layout. And some are just doing the layout designer as well. But that that is there available to you to actually do those reports on your own if you want to learn how to do that process. And we've we provided training for a few customers on, on developing SSRS reports, SQL Server reporting services through the builder, and um, and giving them that ability to take that on themselves to do you know, changes as they wish to reports. Okay, so in here we have, you know, you see your parameters. These are all coming from within nav. So, oh, you know, when I look at all of these parameters in here, I can't add new parameters in here. I have to actually make sure that those are added here with any, with any kind of, um, uh, you know, back, background logic before I pull those into the report builder and put them on the report. So things like the logo, I have to call that logo and send it over and things like that. So all of that has to be done in here with the coding and your data elements. So you'll see there's a lot of things in here for, you know, you see here's all your ship to address fields. And if I go over to my report builder, those are all over here too. Okay. So all of those things designed in nav and then, you know, they use the layout to basically build the report in the way you want it to look. 
Okay. So again, that's that's kind of an option you can actually use with standard nav reporting. That report builder, I'm not going to save this one, but if, when I save it, it basically creates a layout file and saves that back into nav um, against that report. Okay. So we have quite a few customers that do that. So if you're interested in learning about that, certainly reach out and um, and we can help you along with that to, to do some minor customizations or extensive customizations. And again, because for SQL Server Report Builder is an industry available program, there's a lot of training uh, courses online as well that you can actually get for that, a lot of training for free. Okay, so I'm gonna close that in my designer here. Um, so th those of you who are familiar, this is NAV 2018, so um, you know, you're familiar that you can add charts and things like that to your uh, role center. Um, so, you know, there's key performance indicators, sales performance, inventory performance. You know, I can go into my charts and I can look at different charts, okay? I can edit this list um, if I want to go in and, um, and select a chart here. Okay, I can go up here to edit and then I can base this on an analysis view or an account schedule or something like that and have that visible on my role center when I log in. So I don't necessarily need to go out and run a report, enter my filters and, ha and print that out on paper. Maybe there's some reports that I want to see as a chart on my role center, late orders, you know, like, um, you know, I want to see some cash flow reporting and things like that. So you have the ability to use some of the standard charts and are that are available in NAP, or you can create your own and show them on the role center. Okay, um, and you'll see analysis views and templates here. So, you know, analysis views in the system uh, build like a mini data warehouse within the system. You tell the system um, that I want to look at um, customer, you know, sales, you know, sales, uh, you know, uh, sales data. And I want to group that by customer and by region, territory and a couple of item dimensions. And it will pull that information into an analysis view. And then you can use that in reports with a nav or within a chart on your rule center. OK, the only thing um, I've seen is just, you know, just be cautious about how many charts you add to your role center, because um, each time you actually go back to the role center or you actually um, open up NAV, it has to query and refresh all of those views. And also, obviously, you probably don't want to see six or seven charts on your role center e either, either, because, you know, it's not really efficient. You're not going to the, the important things are not going to pop out at you. OK, so in later versions of NAV, um, let's just look at. Um, a report so um, let's look at an inventory analysis report or um, let's look at a sales invoice actually so let's jump over to our posted documents and let's open up a sales invoice okay so um, if we go up here into our, our, our print okay so we, we you know this is our traditional um, option form that page that pops up here asking me to set some filters some things are predefined um, the standard preview is available there to see on the screen um, I can also uh, ever report in NAV and later versions of NAV, I can export those automatically out to PDF. I can print them to a printer. But you also have a couple of different options down here for integrating to other systems within NAV, uh, other, other programs, sorry, in the Microsoft Office stack. So I can actually send this report out to Word, okay? I could open that report up, and then if I need to actually tweak and, and modify that report, I can do that here in Word, and then I can save it or send it out to the customer. Or maybe I want to add some a few notes on here for them, specifically to them. So I can do things like that by sending that out to Word. So again, that's available to every report in the system. But obviously, if you're sending something out to Word, you're probably looking at more of a document sort of layout, a purchase invoice, sales invoice, statement, things like that. You probably want to send those kind of things out to Word. Um, but then I, all of my lists here, so I have kind of lists here, so I can, you know, highlight my list, okay, and then I can go up here, and then um, I can print and send, and I can send it to Excel. So this is available from any list in the system. So typically, of course, this view you're seeing here of a list of things looks more like Excel, so it's going to look better when you export that out to Excel. So let me just highlight all of those, okay, and I'm going to send those out to Excel. And you'll see that, that that basically just populates my Excel sheet with all of that data in it. And then I can do some further analysis if I want to. So that direct connection into, into Excel is, is there available to you. Okay. You can't make changes in, in, in here in Excel and save it back to NAV because there's just too much validation. There's a lot of validation. Of course, this is posted invoices. I can't change those anyway. Um, but there is a lot of validation behind a lot of the fields in NAV to make sure that those conform to, you know, lookups and making sure they're, you know, the right decimal places and things like that. OK, I'm not going to save this one, but I am going to go over to my items just to give you a bit of a, a sample of that. OK, so I'm going to highlight my items here. I'm going to send those out to Excel. OK, so now I got all my items here. All right, I'm just going to minimize this a little bit. So I'm just going to go over to one of my items here and I'm going to open up my mangoes item. 
Okay, I'm going to edit this item. I'm just going to say this is um, raw fresh mangoes. Okay, so I'm just going to change the description of that one. Okay, I can go over here and into my Excel sheet now because the system has actually created a link between these two, and I knew and in I now I have um, a availability to I have a tab up here for Dynamics Nav. I can refresh this, and you'll see now my mangoes description actually changed to raw fresh mangoes. So it's actually re it's keeping that link between this Excel sheet and na the Nav data, so that I can then refresh that data and pop uh, periodically. So think about this: if I had a lot of sales data in here, for instance, okay. I create my sheet with all the columns that I actually want to see as my raw data, and then I can refresh that periodically, but then I can build all of my other tabs over here with my KPIs. I can use all the power that's in Excel to create charts and views and things like that. And then all I have to do is, you know, I can hide my sheet and then just refresh it periodically. And then it will refresh all of my other worksheets that are actually linked to that raw data. And I can create all of my own reports out of the box without any assistance or any cost that any extra cost to me by just using that add-in that comes from Excel for Dynamics Nav. Okay, so that's really powerful, that link that it creates between the tables. So it knows that you can see up here on the first cell, it knows what what um, what table and database and you know that it's actually connected to and the items and it tells me the last time it was actually refreshed okay so it keeps updating that date and time here and I can just build out all of my reports in Excel without any any extra cost to me uh, without developing any nav reports without really having to learn anything because most of us really know Excel really well and it's a very powerful tool for reporting um, and this is based on the, the data that's coming out of NAV that, you know, even if I go through and I edit the sheet when I refresh it, it's going to refresh with the latest data. So, you know, I'm not going to be, I'm making sure that all of my report, reports conform to the data integrity within the system. Okay. I'm not going to save that one. Okay. So a couple of different options there you'll see, you know, um, and that's really standard NAV reporting, exporting to Word, exporting to Excel, and saving reports to PDF, all of those things available to you out of the box. So let's move on and kind of talk about style sheets a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my style sheets. Okay, if I can spell that right. All right, so I'm gonna go to my style sheet list and I have a bunch of style sheets that I've set up in this database. The one I'm gonna, a couple of them I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna look at the packing slip. I'm gonna look at the, the, uh, the certificate of analysis. Okay, so let's just open that up. So what the style sheets allows me to do is basically build the report on my own. So it allows me to specify the data elements I'm looking for. So I can see here that I'm looking at the lot information table because I've got to run this uh, certificate analysis from the lot. I also want to drill in and pull in some QA answer data. Okay. I want to look at, I want to pull some fields off the item because maybe an item description or a unit of measure isn't available on one of these other tables. And then I'm going to look at the QA header as well. So I'm defining what the different tables contain the data that I'm looking for in my report. Um, if, if, these, if these table names get a little bit long, I can fill in an alias here to make it a little bit shorter, okay? And that just helps me, um, it helps Word actually, you know, to split out those different data elements and things like that. So something like lot information is a little bit too long, so I just put LNI in there. Um, I do need a base record, and then I can specify whether any of these records is intended to, from the lot information, going to uh, link to the QA answer if I'm going to have multiple lines. I can also specify the fields, so I can go in here and say what fields do I want to grab from each of these different data sets, and I can define relationships, how these all relate to each other. Okay, so you'll see here I can go here into, um, I can select fields for the lot information. So I see all of my fields that are available on my lot and I've just told the system what fields that I wanna pull into my report, all right? When I get into um, my table relationships, let's go to QA answer and then a style shapes and I can define my uh, calculated, sorry, that's calculated fields. So I can do calculated fields as well. Um, and here's my table relationship. So I can see how those are related together. So there's a link between the lot information and the QA answer based on the item number and the lot number. Okay. And this, I may, because I'm doing QA, um, uh, you know, metrics, I may have, I may have a, a many different um, tests that I actually did on this item and lot. So I do have a multi-line set up over here. Okay. Telling the system that it's going to go into multi-line. Okay. So once I've specified my, um, the, the page that I'm going to run this off of, meaning where I'm going to, what page do I want to click on to run this report? Um, the style sheet, define my data elements. Okay, I can open up a, a mail merge from, from Word. Okay, so I can go over here and then basically all I'm doing is building my, uh, my table structures and just telling the system what data elements I want to populate in there. So I can have my 
um, I can have my, um, I can key these in uh, specifically or I can bring in the actual captions. I can put formulas in there for work date and users and things like that. I can put spaces for signatures. Um, because this is a Word template, you can go out onto dynam uh, in into um, Office 365 for Word and you can download a template for an invoice or a purchase order. There's thousands of templates out there for many different documents within the system, bills elating, packing slips, things like that. So you can download one of the templates that comes pre-built for you and then you just drop in the fields. Okay, and so that makes it really nice. You get a nice layout already built for you. You can then customize a little bit for yourselves um, and then add in your fields. Um, and up here is where you can, you know, I can mail merge and then I can import this mail merge or I can um, in here in the style sheet, I can import and that's gonna import in that, um, that standard document that I've downloaded from the templates. Okay, so that, we'll look at this, what that certificate analysis looks like in a second. Okay, I just wanna open up the packing slip for a second. Okay, so the packing slip, I'm really going to be running that off the warehouse shipment header and I want to pull in information from the line as well. But from the line, the line may have multiple lots on it. I want to show the lot. So I can go in here into nested tables and I can see that I'm pulling in the reservation entry in here as well. So for each warehouse shipment line, I want to pull in all of the various lot numbers into my report. Okay. So same kind of thing. I build my relationships, select my fields, tell the system which ones are going to have multiple lines. Um, I'm going to open up my mail merge so we can briefly see what that looks like. Okay, so here's, you know, here's my captions, you know, my cap, captions warehouse shipment number and then show me the warehouse shipment number. Then in my table down here, I want to show the item number, the description, and then I have a nested table for the lot. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. We have documentation on our on style sheets as well and how to do all of this with screenshots and things like that. So if you're looking for, for some assistance. Don't think you have to remember how to do all this and figure it out on your own. I can send you some documentation that's in, in our um, in our feature book, basically our BCRP document, and that'll show you how to build out these nested relationships and things like that, and how to build all of these. Okay, so let's like, just go over to let's see what a style sheet actually looks like when we go to run it. Okay, so let's look at my lot information. Okay, I'm going to look at this nutmeg ground. I just put a description here because I know that I've done some QA. Um, some QA analysis on this specific lot. I open up the lot card, okay? And under my actions, I have this templates button with a with a word logo on it, okay? So when I run that templates, it shows me all of my style sheets that I've linked to this, the to the uh, page, okay? So just as a reminder, if you drop down into this blue box here and you say help about this page, it tells me what the page number is here. So this is page 6505. So as I'm creating my style sheet, I just want to tell the system that this is a style sheet I can run from this page. Okay, so my templates, I'm going to look at my, my certificate of analysis. I'm just going to run that. Okay, it opens up in Word. Okay, it fills in, it fills in my lot number, my item number, my description, my date, my if I want to put a customer order number in there with the total pounds are. My QA metrics, these are all my QA values that I actually took. Because this is in Word, now I can basically, I can add my signature in here, I can add some specific comments, I can then save this out to PDF and send it to my customer, okay? So, you know, this this comes in handy because um, you may actually want to add all of your available QA attributes here, and then um, and then by customer, maybe one customer wants to see the SVO and another one doesn't, or you have to show all of them, that sort of thing. So you can kind of, because this is in Word, I can now go in here and, and you know, I can change my my values, okay? So once I, um, I'm gonna just put today's date in here, so 10, 25, 18, okay? And when I go to close this Word document, okay, it asks me if I want to ins import and store it, okay? So I'm just going to say yes. And you'll see over here in my documents, if I go up here, now I've actually stored this, okay? So it keeps a record of the Word document with any edit edits that I made to it against the um, against the, the lot card in the BCRP document management, okay? So I see a document now has been created. And if, I have, if the customer says they didn't get it, I need to rerun it again, okay? I can just open this document. Okay, it opens it up in Word. I see there's my date. So you can see that that changed. I can resave it against a PDF and send it back out to them, or anybody else can open this document and see what this what the certificate analysis look like for this lot number. Okay, so some, some neat functionality with style sheets, kind of giving you that ability to actually do this document style reports, run them directly from Nav. You tell the system what the data elements are and how those are linked. You build all the joins between the tables, um, you know, and how those are linked together. 
and um, and basically just determine what the layout you want it to look like. Okay, and then run it, and it exports out to Word. Save it as PDF or leave it as a Word document, um, and then um, and you can send that out to customer. So we see customers use this a lot for document style reports, as I mentioned. So things like your purchase order, your sales order, your certificate analysis, packing slip. You know, you can see that we've created a few here. Um, We've created a few in this in the system here um, to give you an example of some of those. So we have a QA, a quality assurance form, okay, that Mike has actually created. So if I open this mail merge document up, you see this is quite a nice looking QA form with all of the different. Um, maybe this is something that gets printed out. QA takes it out and actually records the results. You can scan it and import it back in against the lot number, um, that sort of thing. So you can build out all the reports with the layout you want to see and then just populate the data that's going to come from nav and leave blank the areas that somebody needs to fill in. Okay, so a lot of functionality with style sheets. All right, so let's move on, um, you know, to the data warehouse. Okay, so I'm just going to type DW in here. So how do the data warehouse actually works is what we've done with the data warehouse, it um, we build, we've built uh, structures within NAV, okay? So structures which are basically SQL queries that actually go out and join all the data for you. Um, because often the biggest challenge of starting a data warehousing project from that we see and the industry sees and people always you know, mention is where do I start? How do I know how the sales invoice connects to the sales invoice line, connects to the reservation entry, connects to the item, and then connects to the pick or wherever else that I need to do? So how do I know, you know, out of the you know thousand or so tables that are in now, how all those connections are made? Um, and you know, it's just a daunting task to think about starting that on your own. So what we've done for the data warehouse is we've you know created those structures for you and um, and done things like product sales history so we have a product sales history table in the system we flattened all of that data out and pulled it from all the various sources so within that table we have all of the customer information so the customer the address all of that sort of information the item and all of its information like description unit of measure costing and that sort of thing and then we also have the lot number with its information and all your quantities and costing all in one table so when you're building a report for sales history or costing or profitability or things like that, you can just you can just basically use that one table that has all of the data from maybe seven or eight different tables in NAV all joined together for you. So that work is kind of done for you. And that's the goal of the data warehouse. So the data warehouse does create a separate SQL database on your SQL server. So it's not creating something completely out of the normal, you know, that's not visible to you, that's, you know, very uh, proprietary. What it's doing is, you know, when you set up the data warehouse, you, you know, initialize, you tell the system what companies within the database you want to pull out there. Um, you initialize it, it will create the SQL database for you. Okay, so I can see here, this is my main database and this is my data warehouse database. So we'll just create another one with a DW on the end and it creates those, just takes the data from NAV and puts it into those structures. Okay, because NAV is a very great system for tracking day-to-day -day you know, linear data, multiple tables, you know, giving you that ability to manage your business, but it's not designed to be that system to give you forecasting and do models and then do predictions and run those extensive queries and things like that. Data warehousing tools are designed for that. Okay, so what we've done with the data warehouse, again, giving you those structures and things like that, we'll look at shortly. Okay, so let's go to database, uh, data warehouse structures. So you can see here with the structures, we have some views and some tables. So, you know, we have um, the BCRP hold available, hold information, availability views by item. Okay. We have um, sales and purchase inventory, shipment views, um, QA, and then we have tables down here where we pulled out customer contract, uh, contacts, currencies, um, and then general ledger information, the GL register, inventory posting, jobs, production, purchasing. So we pulled all of this information out and then created some um, other tables down here to join, which is things like product sales history. Okay. And, and you can see over here, if you're more of a, like a SQL person that actually understands SQL queries, okay, I can, I can drill into here and I can see how all of these, um, how these are built. Okay. This is, way over my head on how these are built. But <laughs> for some of you that are familiar with doing SQL joins and stuff like that, you'll kind of see how this is all, you know, you'll see outer joins and inner joins and things like that in here. So you'll see how those, and that we've and the goal of the data warehouse is to do that work for you. 
Okay, and then once you have the data in these tables and views and structures, then it's up to you to determine how do I want to use that data? Do I want to use Excel to actually hit that data warehouse and build my reports there? Do I want to use the, the reporting engines that are available with SQL? Do I want to use a front end tool like Domo or Power BI or, um, or SAS? You know, it, you can use whatever front end tool you want, and, but the data is already structured there for you. Okay. So it, you can go as light, or even things like Jet. We met, we did uh, we did a, a webinar with Jet a few months back, and that's recorded up on our website. But you can use Jet reports as well to um, to hit our data warehouse. Okay. So what that does is saves you the load on the nav database with actually pulling all that information out, and then allows you to have that information just just the information is important, structured, and built in here. Um, you have some build uh, functionality and refresh up here. So building the, all like the, cl cleaning out those tables and rebuilding them from scratch or just re doing a net change refresh. You can schedule these as well. So you can have that data warehouse refresh overnight, for instance, and then, um, and then you'll be able to uh, query that data uh, afterwards. Okay. So that's kind of the, the, the nav part of things and how the, 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 uh, the tables are structured. And you can see the queries in here. It tells you the last modified time. And there's a log as, available as well to tell you if there was any failures or things like that. Um, you can go in here um, you, and you can customize these queries if you wish, or you can have us to help out with that if you're, if you're not familiar with that, if there, you have some custom fields that have been added through your implementation process that aren't available here in the query, you can add those there. Okay, so those can certainly be added, um, and um, and that then you'll have those available to you in your data warehouse. Okay, so over here I'm just opening up SQL Server reporting services. So when when we actually deploy um, the the um, the data warehouse for you, there's obviously as you saw there's some objects and configuration within uh, within Nav, but there's also there's some setup on SQL, which is basically giving you these predefined about 40 different reports. Okay. Most of the people, most people are really interested in things like sales data, purchase history, item availability, and then some CRM information like um, opportunities and things like that. We have applied payments, a check register, um, aged AR and aged AP, some different views for that, uh, production history. So you have a little bit of a sampling from all the different areas across NAV, okay? Um, I can actually go up here and I knew and I can actually create a brand new report if I wish, if I'm familiar with SQL Server reporting services, uh, you know, SSRS, you know, is, is, a, um, is what it's called. And again, this is an industry available tool. So many, many, many different um, training courses available online, a lot of them free. There's some blogs and groups you can join if this is something you want to take, out, take on, on on your own is developing out additional reports or changing the reports that are here. Again, we have a couple of customers that um, have, are familiar with this and can run with that. Okay, so again, we have our, our data set down here, which is pointing to our data warehouse, okay? So this is our, our NAV data warehouse over here. Um, and then all, we have all our different reports that are built off of that. You know, let's just open up something like our aged accounts payable. So we'll open up our accounts, aged accounts payable and it gives me a bunch of different um, filters that are available on the header. So I can filter by due dates and things like that. Okay, and I can set up set up how I want my aging. Um, let's look at um, customer item statistics. Okay, and uh, one of the things that's nice with the data warehouse, it does take the company and actually add that as a um, as a, a column to all of your data sets. So you can look at you can look at um, you can do reporting across multiple companies if that's applicable for you as well. Okay, and then I can go here, through here to my customers, and this basically brings in all of my customers, and I'm just going to select all of them. Okay, and I can just view my report. Just takes a second to go out and query and bring that data in. Okay, so you can see here there's a lot of customers over here, and then I can basically drill into that data and um, and see quarter one, quarter two, profitability, things like that. So let's look at um, something else in here. Um, okay, I'm gonna again pick my company. Okay, I'll probably have a lot of customers that are overdue balances. Okay. Okay. Then I get some, and I can do some nice charting as you can see here. So I can see um, this customer and I can drill into my data. Okay. Q1, Q2. I can see what my my item sales and total profit was for my Costco customer. 
you know, when my due date for my payments are and things like that. So I can see what my profit and sales are. So again, these are some standard out of the box reports. You know, when we install the data warehouse, there's about 40 of them and um, it gives you that ability to, um, to run these reports if you wish to customize them on your own or develop new ones, that's completely open and up to you to be able to do. Okay. But the main thing about the data warehouse for us is really giving you the back end tool to doing the work for you on doing all those joins and how the data is actually structured. And then actually having you actually do, um, you know, having you decide what the front end tool you wish to use that you're comfortable with for doing that reporting. Okay. And if I get into something like Excel, okay. If, if, if Excel is what um, what I'm, I'm more comfortable with, okay, I can open up Excel, open up a new workbook, okay, I can go over here to my data, I can say, um, you know, a new database query, so from other sources, from a SQL server, for instance, okay, I think I have a query already set up here, from a SQL server database. OK, I can then specify my database, you know, which is my data warehouse, and then I can pull that data into the system and then um, and then I can basically just refresh it. So, again, instead of running that, we saw that nav, the Excel linkage from Excel into the direct nav data. I can also do Excel basically linking into the data warehouse data. OK, and then build my reports off of that. OK, so many different ways to actually pull that data in. Um, the nice thing about the data warehouse is the structure is already done for you. Okay, I'm not going to save this. Okay, so that's kind of um, just going back to our list of reports for the data warehouse. These come predefined out of the box for you, um, and then you can basically customize these or add ones if you wish on your own, and you can develop some KPIs up here on the top um, and open up those and um, you know manage that and things like that. The nice, the other thing about the data warehouse is um, I can go into my scheduling up here. Okay, so I can do a new um, subscription. Okay, so I can do that on the report actually. Okay, so I'm going to manage this report. Okay, I can go over here to my subscriptions and I can add a new subscription. And what that's going to do is I can basically have that deliver this report by email out to a group of users on a schedule. So every night I can have the my sales report run and basically send it out and it will just appear in the inbox of, of all of my sales group. Okay, so they don't have to go in and open up this, you know, run the report, set their filters. I set all of my default filters down here. You see here's my parameters. I set my values and then tell the system who I want to send out to and what the delivery options as far as date and time are. OK, so it's nice that you can build that schedule in there as well. So there's some, a lot of functionality within the SQL Server reporting services. OK. So again, we're touching at a high level on a lot of these uh, these items. So um, if you have any questions specifically about these, just reach out to me and I'll try my best to get those answers for you. I'm not definitely not the expert on developing reports in SQL Server reporting services, but we do have people in house that can answer those questions for you when, if those come up. Okay. So the final thing I wanted to look at today is, you know, we're, we've kind of been taking this reporting through from base nav reports and exporting to Excel, some some very simple things and and um, that you can do on your own, um, and then going into style sheets again, something something you can configure and and build your reports up on your own, and then going into the data warehouse. So if you have the data warehouse, you can go in and build your reports on your own or use Excel to actually access that data. But then what Microsoft has provided in Office 365 is, um, is Power BI. And you may have heard of this before. It, was, it did go under a different name before. There were kind of three tools. Um, I believe they were called um, Power Builder, um, Power Query, and uh, there was another Power. There were three Power um, items. So what that actually is, is done is Microsoft has kind of rebranded that into, uh, into a product called Power BI. Okay, so let me just open up a couple of... Uh, Power BI, item, you know, uh, dashboards here. Okay, so this is a really nice um, dashboard that was done in in house by Laura. Um, you know, those of you who are familiar with Laura, I'm not going to take credit for this one. She did a really nice job of developing the the charts and things in here. So with Power BI, um, it is a separate tool. I believe there's a free version, and then there's um, that there's a uh, an advanced version that come with Office 365. So you can go up to the uh, the App Store for your micro uh, your Office 365 and download Power BI. Again, there's a Power BI user group out there, just like the Nav user group with with blogs and things like that. And there's many different courses and you know and videos on YouTube on how to build out these these reports. 
Um, and you can use this Power BI to actually, you know, again, you can use it to hit your nav data directly and bring that into Power BI and then develop your reports. Or you can use the Power BI tool to actually access your data warehousing um, information. Um, so it's not putting that load on your nav database each time you want to go and refresh. Um, you can build out, uh, Laura's kind of mask the company names. So you can have multiple different companies in a database. You can have different years. And you build out all of these basically little parts within the dashboard. Okay, and then if I click on customers over here, you'll see that all of the other charts change based on the customer that I'm actually selecting yeah, or the item I'm actually selecting or in this case, the item category and showing me different um, elements on that. You know, and if I click out of that and I turn it off and see, I would just want to see all of my item categories. It kind of goes back when I'm actually building these out. Okay, I can just over up here and I can basically export my data or I can go through and modify it. So you'll see over here on my right hand side. You'll see I can select what type of visualization I want from my chart. So many different options available out of the box, pie charts, graphs, et cetera, 3D models. Um, I can develop some flows and formats as well. And then I can set some, I can set some predefined filters of what the users will actually see here. Um, so I can drag and drop fields for visualization and things like that. So once I've linked it to, this is linked to product sales history, which I've, I talked about in the data warehouse query. So you'll see down here, these are all the fields that are available in the product sales history. So I have all my dimensions, I have my item categories, I have product groups, um, I have all of my, my customer name and customer number information, my posting groups. So I can basically drag and drop these fields into here, almost like you've done with a pivot chart, um, and basically build out my different um, parts and sections that I actually wanna see here, okay? Um, so it's really just about you know deciding um, the nice thing again about power, about the data warehouses. This is all built for you, and all of this data is you know is a single row of data with all of that information related to that sales or inventory transaction. Um, so then I can just pull in part pull in those different um, data elements into my chart and say you know how do I want to structure this. So. When Laura built this, this is more around the sales side of things, so sales and profit, but you know, by year and by, by customers and by salesperson, you know, sales by customer, profit by product, things like that. So again, um, very you know, nice visual, um, you know, and then just basically structuring my data up here. So however I want to get my data, it looks a little bit like Excel. We just looked at for as far as getting your data, connecting it to your data source, and then picking the tables you actually want. OK, so I can have, you know, I, there's two in here. So I have a company table with the company name and code. And then I have my product sales history in this example, you know, with all of my fields attached there. OK, if I look over at my uh, manufacturing, this is one I did quite a while ago that I kind of need to update. But I did bring um, some data in here about production. So I have my uh, expected material cost, actual material cost for my different item categories for my production data. Um, I had my production order numbers with what my expected output was and what my machine runtime was. And then over here on my item categories, you know, I have my expected capacity cost and actual capacity cost. So I can see that, you know, if I'm using um, routings and things like that, what I expected, you know, based on the top, the runtime and the cost, what I expected to cost me to make this item and then what it actually cost. Okay. And then I have my expected up here and uh, per item. And then if I go over to my page two, I just added a couple of ones over here. So, you know, I added some variances and, um, and different parts over here. So you can see, again, this is looking at my production order line history. So a different table within the data warehouse. Okay. But again, that has all of my expected and actual, you know, material costs and runtime costs. And then I can also within this, once I've brought in this table, I can add all, I can add custom calculations and I can build custom, uh, you know, fields in here based on, I want it to be, I want a variance percentage because as you can imagine, variance percentage isn't a field that's in nav, um, but I can basically calculate that based on these two columns, based on whatever formula that I actually want to put in there. Okay, so I can do a lot of that sort of thing. I can then publish this out to the web. So if I want to have a website where my um, where my salespeople and things like that log in and they have their specific views within the system, I can publish this out to a Power BI on the web and give them access to that. Of course, you know it's 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 all built around you know security in there as well. So it's not like anybody outside your organization can, can just grab this data. Um, and you can set that up there here, here as well. So I just added one visualization here. You know, but again, I can just, I can move any of these different. Um, these different list views into a different um, visualization if I want to see it that way. Once I make my changes to my dashboard, I can just republish that out to the web so everyone kind of has access to that. Okay, so kind of taking that from, you know, um, 
I like to think of it from my perspective as the least complicated, you know, looking at the, you know, um, and, you know, looking at the reports for the nav using Excel to hit my data warehouse or my data, you know, building my reports in there because you're very, you used probably really familiar with creating pivot tables and pivot charts within nav, within uh, Excel, sorry, using nav data or your data warehouse, you know, and then using style sheets for more of those document style reports that you want to look really nice. And Word is a really great tool for doing that layout and making it pretty, putting logos on it and spaces and charts and, and tables and things like that. So using the style sheets for that and the data warehouse for helping you have those structures as well as giving you some of those predefined reports that are available in the system as well. Okay, so back on that list of reports. And then, um, and then looking at Power BI is taking it to that next level of, you know, if you want to uh, build that out. So a few of our customers have built some really amazing dashboarding in, within Power BI. Um, so it's an extremely powerful tool um, for building out that data and structuring it in the way you actually want to see it. Okay, so let me just switch back to my PowerPoint here as we kind of wrap things up a little bit. Okay, so again, we've, we've looked at the base nav reports and how you can build out the layout on your own and, and do any kind of um, any changes you wish for that. Um, and you can export that, e exporting data from, na from nav out into Excel using that add-in you can get from Excel for the nav, uh, Dynamics nav. So you just have to basically download that add-in and it come, pops up in nav. Uh, pops up in, in Excel connecting to, to nav. You have your word uh, for doing kind of layouts and things like that as well. Refreshing that data from Excel, we looked at the data warehousing tool, uh, giving you those predefined structures and review with the report builder and scheduling, you know, from within the data warehouse, you know, being able to, you know, develop your own reports and send those out automatically. And then looking at one of those tools like Power BI. And by, by no means is Power BI the only tool out there. As I mentioned, we have a couple of customers using Domo. Uh, we have several, you know, we I know the SAS is a really big reporting tool out there, Tar Target with an IT is out there as well. So there's many different engines out there for data uh, for, for data warehousing. Um, so it's really a matter of finding what the front end tool you're most comfortable using to develop your reports um, and then um, and then using and then and then using that data tool in the background to pull that data out. All right. So again, for those of you who aren't familiar, my contact information is Kirk at BeckConsulting.com. If you email sales at BeckConsulting.com, you'll get our whole sales group. Um, the recordings are up on our website. So if you go to BeckConsulting.com and um, off to the right-hand side, there's an About Us. And then if you scroll down to ERP Unlocked, you'll see all of our recordings there. So today's recording will be up on the website by the end of today, as well as all of our past webinars. And I think we're at this is webinar number 26, so there's many different webinars up there, which are great tools if you have new employees or something that you want to get very familiar with trade or how to enter purchase orders or best practices on warehouse. Certainly, you'd look like go to those resources and uh, make use of those. Okay, our next webinar um, is going to be webinar 28, so it's going to be scale and bartender integration. We kind of changed around the schedule a little bit. We were going to be doing um, uh, the the uh, the portals, but we're going to leave that um, for a later date. We're going to do scale and bartender integration. So uh, we're going to look at two of these integration tools so um, that are new that we've developed out in the system. So one is the integration to a scale. So giving you that ability if you're doing um, bulk commodity receiving and those sort of things to be able to scale in and scale out, um, connecting to the actual scale head through web services and bringing that scale data in um, and um, and you know recording that within a warehouse receipt on nav. So we'll look at that instant ability to capture weight values from the scale. The scale uh, application we have is NTP NTEP certified and compliant in all 50 states. So that is, has been certified by the by the government body to make sure that, that uh, we can actually use that as a reliable source of information for weighing. The second half of our webinar, we're going to look at Bartender, which most of you are, are, are probably familiar with. Um, so Bartender allows you to create your custom labels and formats and things like that. So we'll look at how we've integrated to Bartender to be able to send that data over to Bartender and allow you to create, a, you know, all of your own custom label formats and designs in Bartender to your heart's content. Okay, so we'll look at that in our next webinar. I hope you can join us. The, uh, the, it's it's going to be the um, same as this one, a little bit of a week later. We usually do the, the third Thursday in the month. Um, but this won't be November 22nd um, because we're, we're out, of, out, of, out of the office at a company meeting the week before. So that invitation will be going out shortly, and I hope you can join us on our next webinar. Um, and please feel free, if you have any questions after today's webinar, um, certainly join us. Uh, certainly reach out to me, okay, at kirk at beckconsulting.com, 
and thank you for taking the time out of your day today to join us. Thank you.